You're watching KMOT TV, your news leader. You know, I think towards the end of the season, that's what we lived and died by. Every playoff game that we had this year, quarterfinals, semifinals, and the championship game, we're down at half. And, you know, we knew what we had as a team. And to be able to come back and win games continuously was truly never out of the fight. Well, we just felt like fans kind of thought, oh, Mana High is the, the biggest school in the state, and we just can't win. I feel like they already counted us out the fight, but we knew that we had the potential to go to the Dakota Bowl and win it. This was Coach Hendershot's first year of four-year seniors. And starting from our freshman year, moving all the way up, we would work in the off season, work in the summers, work in the winters, get up or lift in the morning early. And you know, I think all of that translated to the season. Go back to their freshman year, a very talented group. Uh, I think through the work that they've done in four years, the time that we've spent together, uh, they're, they're an easy group to to, to latch on to. Shanley, Cheyenne, and Davies are the three teams receiving first place votes. The Braves and the Patriots are third and fourth. Minot and Legacy from the WDA are also receiving votes in the poll. I wasn't happy. I was, uh, I understand where they're coming from, but I knew that we were a better team. I definitely knew that we deserved to be up there. So we just had to prove it. Uh, we use it to feel it. Uh, never count ourselves out. You know, other people may have counted us. We didn't count ourselves out. In Minot High's season opener versus St. Mary's, the Magicians scored 21 points in the first quarter. Give to Tyson Ruziska, and he breaks free. We didn't stop. We just kept fighting. No matter what, we kept going down, and we scored, and we scored, and we scored. And then they let me in, first ever snap, and I left. Never forget that. Beater to Ruziska in the flat. 11 yards to score. Kick makes it 21-0. I've never caught a ball in my life. Um, I'm notoriously bad on the team for catching footballs. Um, but it just kind of popped there right to my hand. I remember I started running and I was gone. And I was just, I got to make it. I got to make it. I got to make it. In my head, my mom always tells me, she'd be like, give me a touchdown real quick. I'm like, OK, mom. I will as a, as a lineman, I'll get it. Um, and I, I was so scared, I would look back and I thought I was running the wrong way for a second. <laughs> and I was like, okay, nope, this is the right way. And I finally get in the touchdown and we were holding that ball as high as I can because I didn't want to let it go too early. And I was just, I was on top of the world. I couldn't even breathe after celebrating too much. <laughs> it definitely built up a lot of confidence. I, I think like getting out there and just knowing that you had like people to watch your back if you mess up and then knowing that you can watch someone else's back um, that fueled us for a while. It's up north, Mount High Magician! It felt great for us to win those games, especially in years prior when maybe we haven't won some of those games. Legacy, for example, they knocked us out last year and we came back 49-0. I mean, that, that felt great. So, yeah, it just kind of shows the growth that we made this year. Through the first two weeks of the season, Minot scored 86 points without allowing one. That's something that we hadn't really done the last couple years, so it's definitely a lot of fun. DJ, DJ. Let's go. Let's go. The brave black and white of number five Mandan would be Minot's first ranked opponent of the season. Rolls to his right, deep ball. Logan Conklin is there. Minot's first offensive drive results in a 50-yard touchdown catch. Back-to-back -back touchdowns and all that. It's run to the end zone, you know, celebrating and all that. That's that's um, pretty special to be able to do that. Beater to Broderick, barrels into the end zone. Minot gives up their first points of the season in the second half of the game. They're outscoring their opponents 114 to 12. The Magi continued to make history, their first shutout against Century since 2005. I think everyone had momentum in those first few weeks. Our linemen just blocked amazing. Our receivers were catching balls, getting touchdowns. Our running backs were pounding it. Defense was stopping everyone. Our quarterbacks were doing good. It was just, 
and we were just all working as a team. I mean, in those first few weeks, we, I think we all felt that we were unstoppable. Your queen and king, Isabella Rowe and the Jarius Jones. Uh, going for a block, and I hit my guy, and then Griffin <laughs> came up behind me, hit the same guy, but it was, so he was like on this side of my arm, and he like, Griffin hit this side of my arm, and it just kind of like hyperextended it, popped it out. And I felt it right away. I knew something was off. I didn't know exactly what it was, but I knew something was definitely not right. <laughs> so I, I went straight to the ground and laid on my back and just, just waited. That hurt. That was, I didn't, I almost cried on the sideline, not gonna lie, that was bad. And when I heard he was at the dance after the game, he was still, he was still had his cleats on, he still had his pads on, everything. And he was there, I had to say hi to him. It was, it was amazing to see him back at the school again after just dislocating his elbow and now he's back. would be the flashy orange and royal blue of West Fargo Cheyenne under the same color sky. Four hour bus ride to Fargo, got off the bus, I'm a little tired, but you know, things just weren't clicking. And that's just how it goes, you gotta face adversity. Minot's once impenetrable defense struggled against the Mustangs air attacks. Uh, leading up to that, we hadn't faced much adversity yet. And when we got there, I mean, Struggling with a lot of different things. Uh, defensively, we, we weren't getting the stops that we, that we usually were. I mean, we were allowing points, which was uncommon. And we, we were down. Like, even when we were winning, it felt like we were down because we weren't scoring much and they were scoring on us and we just couldn't get it going offensively. I found it really tough to stand on the sidelines, especially against that Cheyenne game, having to watch, you know, your best friends out there trying their best, not being able to help them. That's tough. It was our first game that we'd ever been in face like that. We had never faced such a challenge of adversity up to that point in the season. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome your Mother High Magician. Coming up, after returning from West Fargo with their first loss of the season and two games remaining until playoffs, how Minot High stayed in the fight. The team's first loss of the year was like a shock of cold water. I feel like that actually that loss helped us. I think it helped us come together as a team and be more like come together more and realize there's things we need to work on. There's things we aren't good at yet. So that helped us just work harder and live another day. It's a long bus ride home from Cheyenne. So we get home in the uh in the middle of the night and, and we're feeling that one. Everyone's got that pit in their stomach. We come back on Monday and, and we're moving forward. Uh, we learned some hard lessons from that game, but it's also maybe not the worst thing. Um, it's all fixable stuff and it's, you know, we try to keep it about us. The Tuesday practice, so we had to bounce back. It was a short week against a really tough Bismarck team. Um, that Tuesday practice, we were up on Dwayne Carlson and uh, that was about the most physical practice, most competitive practice that I've, I've been a part of as a, as a coach in a high school program. And it was so much fun. Uh, it started to like kind of that little movie moment. We got started to sprinkle a little bit and uh, we had guys, you know, after every play, scout teams letting the, the defense know if they're making a play, defense is, is shutting stuff down. Uh, and, and it was fun, it was competitive. And I think in that moment as a staff, we knew like, hey, these guys are gonna be all right. You know, you worry about after a, a game like Cheyenne, does that compound itself? Does that grow? Um, and, and Tuesday at the end of that practice, we're like, no, we're gonna be all right. 
cold. I mean, that was super windy and nobody could throw the ball. So it was just ground pound game for both sides. And Minot High has swept the three Bismarck public schools for the first time in school history. And, you know, we knew what they were going to do every play. They knew what we were going to do. It was just who could do it better. And we came out on top. The Minot High Magicians have not swept the West region since 2007. They can change that with a win over Williston tonight. Second play of the game, Magi in those brand new black jerseys. Lucas Beater with time in the pocket. Throws a dart to Logan Conklin and double coverage. Comes down with it, 7-0 Minot. Going through all that and just knowing that we have to stay focused still, we're not done. It does feel good to go on, get wins throughout the season, but stay focused and hope to play four more weeks of football. I felt great just being out there with my friends and you know, it's just a great group of guys. They're just the best. Uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't ask for anything better. Magi finished the regular season against West Fargo next Thursday. What could be their last time under the lights? The chance to clinch the West Region title. I knew in my head I caught it. And I was just waiting for the sideline judge on the left side or the right side to come in and say I caught it because the right hand, he didn't have a good look. What did it feel like after? It felt good. I kind of I kinda got hype on the sideline here. Yeah. Those felt great. Uh, confidence booster for the playoffs, 100%. Uh, kind of tweaked my hammy in the... Um, West Fargo game, but the damage was done, and we are motivated going into the playoffs. Going to start to get a gradual break. Notice some of that starting to let up in parts of Burke County, but that will be a temporary break overnight because this is only wave number one. Wave number two, here it is, Montana. That will make its way into North Dakota tonight and give us that second round of snow. <laughs> snow everywhere in the sides of the field, but, you know, shout out to the Booster Club for shoveling that off. There's snow all around the field. I mean, it's, a, it's like winter wonderland up there. I mean, it was awesome. Uh, guys, like, jumping in the snow, playing in the snow, all pra at practice all week. You know, we were just excited, excited for that game, and very blessed um, to have the support that we did. No luck for Minot. They'd enter the half trailing by one. Well, they thought they won the Super Bowl for sure on that last play touchdown, but you know, we just knew that this is a close game and just had to keep fighting until the end. Yeah, the cold was definitely a factor. Uh, both sides weren't hitting quite as hard as usual, weren't going quite as fast, and uh, but we had heaters to help with that. I mean, we tried to adjust for the weather, but it was hard. I mean, it was a cold game. A lot colder than last year, you know, so we weren't used to that. But I, again, we faced adversity and came out on top. In the semifinal round, an opportunity for redemption. Magician's offense raced to the red zone on their first possession. It was supposed to be a trick play and Tyson had the ball, got it, ran to the edge and then it popped out, the helmet got the ball a little bit. So I was 
probably back in the end zone, halfway to the end zone. So I was just, I can't let him get a touchdown here. This could be our last game here. So it was like, I was just hustling to get down there and make sure I got the tackle. And I ended up tackling him at the one yard line. And it showed that I'm one of our leaders, say. So it showed that I'm not gonna give up so no one else can give up. Despite holding the Mustangs to three points on their first drive, Minot still trailed at halftime. <laughs> Familiar territory from the week before. I think everyone thought, mostly in the stands or watching TV, oh my gosh, Minot, we're not gonna see another Dakota Bowl another year, we don't make it to Dakota Bowl. And we didn't think that, we were playing, we, we knew we could get there, and that's what happened. One of, one of the best halves of football, I think, this entire year. You know, we, we come back, like Logan, Logan had a great play over the middle, Griffin had a great run over the middle. It was just plays after plays after plays, and then our defense going out there getting stop after stop after stop. They scored one quick in the second half, but for them to be able to keep us in that fight and our offense to go out and do their thing, it's, it's truly a team effort that's unmatched. I was a little nervous. We had our, our breakfast in the morning, and I remember um, Coach brought us over to like our board. We have all of our championship wins of every sport, and he brought us over to football, and he goes, 1980, that was the last year that we had won a championship. And I like, I knew it's been a while, but like hearing him talk about it really like kind of said something in me. I was like, I was like, wow, I was thinking it was powerful. It didn't seem real, honestly. It seemed like an NFL stadium. I was a little nervous. It was like another breed on defense. I yeah. went through and I just got stopped. And you know, throughout the season, there were some tough games, but I wasn't used to just not being able to do nothing at all. And I was sitting there and I was like, man, I just, like nothing's, nothing's working right now. It was just showing this game we're gonna have to work for everything that we get. I mean, we're there's not I don't think we're gonna get many breaks. We're not gonna get much slack. We have to earn everything that we're gonna do that game. And I knew all the guys would work for it. Shanley got us in a really tough situation at the end of the half where you have the ball offensively with we're sitting around three minutes to go in the half, and, and you're, you're thinking, man, we can't give them the ball back here, but at the same time, we want to stay aggressive. They get us, I think, on like a three and out, get the ball back, and, and we get that pick right at the end of the half by Talon Jones. I mean, that, that's huge here. We're, we're really on the ropes at that point, and uh, on that particular play, uh, he's in coverage. He actually falls down and gets back up and makes that interception. So that's just symbolic of, of what we're all about as a team. And we use that going into halftime and, and, and knew no matter what, even if we had gone down um, and, and given up a touchdown there, our guys were still going to fight. And we, it wouldn't be done until the clock's at zero. We, we didn't underestimate Shanley underestimate Shanley. We knew they were a great football program and they were who they were. So going down in the first half, going into half, sim similar scenario to the Cheyenne playoff game. Knowing that we can beat these teams, no team is better than us and yes they've scored, yes they're going to make plays, but we're going to make plays too so we just have to be ready for when it's our turn. And I looked up at the scoreboard and it was 14 to 28, I think, if I remember right. And I looked over at Ethan and Tegan next to me and I said, that score looks familiar.
Because I remember we were in that exact same situation pretty much the game before. And uh, Hendershot, the, before the game, said, um, history doesn't repeat itself, but it often rhymes. And I, I remember I looked over and I said that. I said that score looks familiar, and then I said that. And that kind of, I think it gave us a little bit of energy. And we kind of just started stacking the moments. So once that happened, all season long, Hendershot talked about carpe momentum, stack the moments. Just because something bad happens, we can turn around and use the moments from before to come back. Yeah, we were in, a, so we were in zone coverage and I kind of saw the quarterback roll to the right side, opposite side of me, so I kind of stuck, stuck with my receiver. Kind of saw the quarterback's eyes, kind of look at my receiver. I was like, all right, I'm going to jump this route. And I was just like, all right, let's go take. I had intercepted. And I was like, let's go take this as a house. Let's get more than just an interception. Let's go to pick six. I felt like a team play because DJ, he was, he kind of forced the throw. And then Caden Kraft had some good blocks. Anthony Brown, he came up there, was going to lead block if there was anyone. So, you know, it's a team game and you couldn't do it without the team. I remember even on the sidelines of the state game, like, you know, you always hear quotes and stuff, but. Um, I would walk up the sideline or whatever, um, we'd start coming back and I'd be like, it ain't over until we say it's over. And I was just shouting at the top of my lungs, like, you, you know, you think about stuff, but in that moment I meant it. I was, I was serious. I was like, it's not done until we say it's done. I knew that I saw a look at the scoreboard and I saw that they had two timeouts left and I was like, they're going to definitely try to ice me the first one. So. Kind of used it as a warm-up one. Still try to make it, obviously, but used it as a warm-up one. Knew they were going to take it if they took it, and then got ready for the second one. And running out on the field, jumping over, congratulating Kellen, hugging the rest of the team. As soon as that kick happened, uh, I was just walking on the field and I was looking up and I was just in disbelief. It was like no feeling I could have imagined before. I mean, it was awesome. Uh, there's a, a wave of emotion and my, I, I turned and looked up towards my family and had the hands in the air and you felt the energy of the crowd and just that, that um, unbelievable satisfaction and, and we did it. Like, and then also, like, is this real? <laughs> Waiting for the alarm to go off a little bit. I wish we could bottle up what the, the moment we had at, in the locker room after the game. Be emotional with that one. Um, it, it's amazing what you can accomplish when nobody cares who gets credit. I know he won't say it very often, but Coach Hendershot, um, if you were to talk to us as a coaching staff, we feel blessed to have a leader like him. He definitely deserved his Coach of the Year award. Johnson. Has to be one of the best coaches I've ever coached with, in all honesty. Just the total coach. Players love him, we love him, and he's just a fantastic leader of men. I feel like we were doing it for people. Just the community that we had, the how they shoveled the snow off the Mandan game. They did all that. They did so much for us, funded us for so much. Just doing it for the community after all the work that they put in as well, not just us, but the community put in so much work, it felt amazing. Um, I know on the community too, there's a lot of um, older people who are like, man, I remember when we won. It's touching when you know that you're making an impact in the community, playing a sport you love. Um, definitely brought, brought the love to the sport to a, a higher level. When we, when we talk about life, um, we like to think that just get better every day do a little bit more, um, don't go backwards, be the best that you can be. And that's, and that's really what we're trying to get you out of life. Um, be the best that you can be. The moment we had at the end of, uh, of the, uh, the game, we're in the locker room, we're, we're holding the hardware, and we got together and it was a very pure uh, moment and we just said, hey, never forget this as a, as a, a lesson um, that when you face adversity, hey, you're always in the fight. You might be down 28-7 in life sometime. Um, doesn't matter where it is. Um, there's always the next rep. Just lock it in the moment and start stacking those, and then go now from this moment and and be good at whatever you know. Take this to whatever you do next, and, and that's really where 
um, this team becomes transformational and, and we find out what we really have in this, this locker room. You're watching KMOT-TV, your news leader.